the reality is without these products, we were running out of money. Sure. You know, it was getting pretty tight, but the towels got us through. They got us through a period where, you know, we didn't have a lot of money coming in. Uh, we were running out of investor money and we we're waiting for this Series A, which took forever to close. And thank goodness, you know, we sold, we had a huge Christmas, I think it was 2018. And that allowed us to kind of float, keep, stay afloat until the, the Series A closed. So I think, you know, we go back to entrepreneurship, like getting to the point where you're, you're actually selling something sure. is really, really as fast as you can, you know. This is Start the Storefront, the podcast where we inspire entrepreneurship through truth. Today's guests are Ryan Goldman and Jonathan Friedman, co-founders of Volo, the beauty company that has reimagined the humble hairdryer. If you haven't given much thought to hairdryers lately, that's okay, because Ryan and Jonathan have spent the better part of the past decade doing exactly that. They saw the inefficiencies of existing hair dryers on the market, with their thousands of watts going in every direction, and the reliance on a power cord, and they vowed to change that. But inventing a better mousetrap takes time and money, so in order for the fledgling company to stay solvent, they tackled a smaller problem first and invented a new fabric, which they then turned into a hair towel. The success of their hair towel was enough to buoy Volo until this year when they were finally able to release their flagship product, the world's first cordless hair dryer. So listen in as we cover everything from why you can't actually patent a cordless hair dryer, how their idea was nearly ripped off by a Chinese manufacturer, and why you need to quit your current job if you want to start a new company. Now, back to the episode. All right, welcome to the podcast on today's show, talking to the founders of Volo Beauty. Thanks for joining. Ryan, jump into a little bit about why you started the company. Thanks for having us, guys. Of course. Yeah, Yeah, our pleasure. Yeah, so just to start it off, my name is Ryan Goldman. I'm born and raised in San Diego, California. And uh, I've been involved in the beauty business for over half my life of uh, about 25 years. In, in um, what space, like what space did you start in, in terms of beauty makeup or? I actually got involved with a family business uh, that my grandfather founded in 1945. Wow. So Dang. third generation in the industry. I've never met anyone like you. Yeah. Ooh, this is a yeah, first. Okay. That's incredible. Yeah. It's been a long run. So my, my grandfather started the business. Uh, I got involved after college and we had a chain of retail beauty supply stores and salons. Same name, different name. Empire Beauty Supply, it's called. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's been around a long time. And so, so you know, the game, I know the beauty game. Yeah. I've been in it a while. Okay. And uh, what was, what was the first product you guys launched or brought to market? Well, the first product, I mean, we can talk about this a little later, but this was really what sort of preempted the business. This was a concept that I came up with that I can sort of elaborate on how and you know where I came up with the idea. But the first products that we released to market are these here. These are our, our uh, Volo Hero hair towel. So we can speak a little bit to that, but I'll let my illustrious <clears throat> co-founder jump in here. Yeah, um, I met Ryan uh, from living in the neighborhood. So we were friends for a long time. And he approached me almost six years ago with this idea um, for a cordless hair dryer. And what is your what was your background? So uh, I studied engineering. Okay. I'm from the East Coast. I went what to kind Cornell. Of engineering? Biomedical engineering, right actually. On. Yeah. Also from the East Coast. Also from the East Coast. Oh, nice. A lot of Civil engineering coasters. here. Oh, there you go. So that we're basically brothers. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Mind share. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Where'd you go to school? UMass Amherst. Okay. For cool. Cool. Yeah. A lot of Long Islanders up there. Yeah, so I was at Cornell, and then I went on to do technology, consulting, supply chain, manufacturing. I've always sort of wanted to work with product-based companies and start my own. I had a machine shop, as I was mentioning before, for a while, and and I had a software company, which I did for a while. Uh, But then Ryan came over with this idea, and I said, well, that's a pretty damn good idea, cordless hair dryer. That's never been done before. Um, So then off we went. This was um, six years ago. Yeah, yeah, six years. It was just okay. an idea. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he had his background and he had some, some in- inspiration from his older brother who had started a, a beauty line and, you know, away we went. Before we jump into this, why had it never been done before? I mean, you think of all the oh, technological... Hundreds of reasons. Yeah. Uh, so well, I'm I'm so one of the you. things that I, <laughs> immediately comes to my mind is power. That's yeah. it. it. It's is that strictly That's it. That's okay. It. Yeah, you do the math yeah. and with conventional hair dryers and conventional batteries, that's a 10 or 15 pound battery or it runs for 90 seconds. Right. So we had to that was the first obstacle we had to overcome. 
Okay. So I, I was getting my hair cut today and I asked Sherilyn, mm-hmm. who uh, cuts my hair. I was like, hey, have you ever heard of a cordless hair dryer? She's like, doesn't exist. And I was like, what do you mean? She's like, doesn't exist. I said, why, why doesn't it exist? It does. She's like, if it exists, it doesn't put any power out. Right. And so That's I was right. like, let and me show was... you this website. Yeah. And, then, and then I was like, what, do you, what are like the immediate things that you think of? She's like, battery's not going to last yeah. and there's no power. And I was like, okay, I'm not, now I know what to ask. These are good yeah. questions. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Yep. Yeah. And so just going back to, you know, my background and where I came up with it, you know, we have salons, as I mentioned, yeah. and the idea sort of just came walking through salons and just seeing the cords strewn out all over the salon stations and with, you know, the same thing at home with women with, you know, cords and being tethered to your, your bathroom. And so came up with this idea, sort of started to talk to some smart people that have done some product development and, and engineered products. And that's when I introduced it to Jonathan, knowing his background. And so, uh, yeah, it's what started as a, an idea as a cordless hairdryer. He and I are here today to sort of announce uh, the first units that have shipped out to our backers. We, we did a Kickstarter and an Indiegogo years ago, so we're proud and honored to finally say we did it and, and uh, happy to... Yeah, share that's a big share the story with you guys. Yeah, no, it's, yeah. it is a relief. Like this is the biggest milestone, right? To have yeah. the product for sale. How did you guys decide on price point for something like this? So if I'm in that market, and again, I'm going to ask a lot of questions. I don't. I definitely don't know the answers to this. But in terms of like range, when it comes to price points for these things, yeah. So uh, how did you guys decide to land where you are? It is on the higher range um, in terms of price points for for a hair dryer. But there is a competitor, Dyson who many of us know of, they heard of them. They, yeah, <laughs> they, they launched an innovative uh, hairdryer a couple of years ago. Corded. Corded, <laughs> corded, mind you. And it was uh, three, $3.99 was their suggested retail. Then they have a $450 unit and a, they have a yeah, some other device that's $500. Device. Yeah. yeah. So it sort of validated our price point. Yeah. We were actually kind of pleased to see that they came out with a $400 dryer and it sells all over the world. I mean, it's, it's, you know, that's great. If I'm a female, let's say, I guess males have hair dryers too. But if I'm just a human who has a hair dryer, how often do people swap them? Do people keep one forever? Do they have it for like a year? Do they get multiple? It, it, it all like, depends. I mean, how, okay. you know, the quality, I mean, you get what you pay for. I've found with, with selling hair dryers and distributing hair dryers all these years, some will hold on to them for a long time if, if they're bulletproof, but well, others so like. So 35 million hair dryers are sold in the U S every year. Whoa. That's yeah. a lot. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's about a eighteen billion dollar worldwide market just for hair dryers. So it's a it's a big space. That's insane. Yeah, I would have never guessed that. So people to, have multiple. Yeah, you know, but right. to sort of add to that answer, people also tend to buy innovation too. So what's new? What's great? What works better? Absolutely. So we're we kind of find ourselves in that sweet spot. You're on the cutting edge of that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, since you guys were able to figure out the power issue for a cordless hair dryer, what is it looking like for how long it takes to fully charge and then how long you actually get from the battery out of that full charge? So it takes about two hours from completely empty to totally topped off. And then it'll run for 24 minutes with our smart mode. And a good portion of that is heated, but then right when it kind of gets pretty low, it'll go into what's called a cool shot. And then, and which is actually a good way to finish styling your hair. Um, and we're talking about sort of funny uh, research stories. I actually spent a full day in one of Ryan's salons with a stopwatch, like measuring stylist drying hair, you know, and I did like 20 of them. And then, yeah, we had some other people. And um, the average time is about seven and a half, eight minutes of runtime, you know, so we definitely adequately cover that. And then we've obviously done a lot of testing with it. So this thing actually dries, you know, really long, thick hair on one charge. It's, it hasn't been a problem. Yeah. Okay. And are the batteries interchangeable? Yeah. So you can have multiple too. Yeah. This thing actually comes apart, right? So oh, I dropped the concentrator there. So that's the battery right there that yeah. you just, yeah. Okay. So this is the battery okay. pack inside the handle. Yeah. And then, you know, you got the fuel gauge there. Do you guys sell the batteries separately? Yeah, we will. Okay. Yeah. We okay. obviously just launched this last week, but sure. yeah. yeah, we're going to have brand and, new. Yeah, same thing with the charging base. Like if you've got two homes or something, you want to have an extra charging base. And so in my head, like I said this before, but we'll repeat it. So in my head, when I think about your market, right, it immediately went to salons. And then I thought of like hotels would be a great place to, for one, for marketing, frankly, but also because that's probably the same clientele. And then, and then three in my head was my wife, like a, you're just your normal consumer. Yeah. Is that what you guys see too? Yeah. We've actually been approached and you can. Oh yeah, that's right. So hotels are are concerned about power. 
like yeah. major hotel chains. And the mm, things that consume the most build. power yeah. are uh, hair dryers and then irons. And so we've actually been approached by one of the biggest hotel chains out there because they want to start to move all their hotels to, I forgot the acronym for it, but it's basically sipping power off of almost like a USB type of connection. Yeah. Very little power, like low power, low voltage. And, and we can charge this thing. It's not one of those big honking cores. I've, I, you can charge off the, the port in your car. You know, it's, it's a low so it's like power a draw. Charge. So yeah. it's a low, ch- you know, yeah. whereas if you plug in a hair dryer, you're pulling 1800. Mm. Yeah. yeah, you're ripping it. Yeah, so you just so got... this is just a simple cord versus, you know, your typical hair dryer has what they we call a rat, or it's a it's basically you know it has a uh, reset. So if it you know overpowers, yeah. it actually has that. It can trip, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then I see you guys have this bag here, and so is your yeah. So I you know most people don't think about bringing I guess their hair dryers with them when they travel. Are you guys thinking about that? Is that something that's purposeful? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I guess yeah. this is the fun, the only time that maybe this allows this kind of product allows that type of Yeah, and go, yes. go wherever. And we we hear so many stories about people who want to use them like van life sort of situation. Yeah. I mean, There's a lot of that a, with so, COVID now. Yeah. 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 And you, you can fly with this, by the way. This goes okay. through. You can carry it. Yeah. On. Because uh, you can remove the battery. Okay. Well, no, yeah, just because this, this, ba- this, this particular, I guess the battery pack that we have, you know, it's certified to go through. We've traveled with mm-hmm. it. We've traveled all over the yeah. country and the world. Nice. And part of the thinking when we decided on this bag was like packaging is so crazy these days. Like, and we wanted to do something that's more reusable. So it actually protects it during shipment and all that stuff. And, and that was, that was the original thinking. So Um, you get a nice little, it's a nice bag. 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 Yeah. Yeah, It's it's neoprene, soft, protects it. So I think people for who are listening, we, a lot of entrepreneurs tune in. And so when it comes to launching a product like this, what is on your roadmap? Like, what are you guys doing? Are you guys busy? Obviously, you're on this podcast. That's a part of it. But what is your entire sort of go-to-market look like? Sure. So I'll rewind that. to You asked what our first product was. And actually, the first product we released was this hair towel. And that's because, you know, about a year and a half into this, we recognized that it's going to take a while to build the world's first salon quality cordless hair dryer. And yeah. so I've done a bunch of entre- entrepreneurial ventures in the past. And it's like, we, we got to make some money. We got to get some revenue. We got to actually prove out that we can sell stuff. We got to start building a brand. Smart. So I our like team, it. I like it. <laughs> you know, and the other thing was we're going to do a Kickstarter for the dryer, but you know, it's good to do a Kickstarter, you know, for something and then do your second Kickstarter for the main product. So we're like, well, what's something that we Smart. think we can key point there that he make... just dropped for people listening. Yeah. <laughs> Not a rookie move. Yeah. Yeah. Well so, done. so we started work on this towel and I was, I didn't even know what a hair towel was, you know, like, all right, well let's, let's come up with it. And we went through about 50 fabrics and realized that they're all kind of not so great. And you know, that's just through, you know, talking with women who use hair towels. So we actually invented this fabric. We, we made this fabric ourselves. We invented ourselves. this fabric. Yeah, yeah we, we engineered it. We call it nano weave. Yep. And it's, it's, it's nice extremely, yeah. <laughs> there's, there's so many fibers really in there. soft too. Okay. So it's nano unbelievably fibers. absorbent. And then we looked at the size of it, right? And if you hold that thing up, it's actually pretty it big. It like it might be able to dry my entire body. Yeah, no, <laughs> actually, I, no, yeah. We it use, actually does. We, <laughs> yeah, you can use it as a bath towel. I use, I use it as a bath do. towel. Yeah, yeah. it's great. And then you see that strap there. That's just got a visual of you naked. That's (laughs) (laughs) we wanted to make sure that this was an innovative towel. Yeah. You know, we didn't want to just kind of throw something out there. Yeah. Uh, So the other thing we did was looked at the way these are held on top of the head. I'll demonstrate this. He'll demonstrate. We'll 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 do this. Put her on the back. Do the twist. That's the wrap. Here's the twist. I've seen my wife do this. And and here's the tuck, right? That's okay. So that strap there has not been done. Well done. So and yeah. And it's uh, it keeps my wife on would head. be losing her mind. Yeah, yeah. that's amazing. Now, yeah. This this has been uh, yeah. we call it the hero, and it's really been a hero for the company because, as Jonathan mentioned, you know it was great not only great revenue stream and sure. uh, but the, the way this product's been received, you know the reviews that we have are phenomenal. Oh, well branded. And yeah, very yeah. Nice. I mean, we, a little we, sneaky. We were there. very meticulous with the the design, the fabric. As you mentioned, we went through a lot of different prototypes, and but really the, the idea behind it was, you know, as we were d- developing the hair dryer was um, hair health in mind and how, how women are currently damaging their hair with hair dryers and product and heat uh, styling. And so what we've found is that when hair is damp, uh, it's very vulnerable and that's when it can be damaged the most. So we sort of created what we call this baby blanket for your hair. It's super absorbent, minimizes hair drying time by 60%. So all these great things that lead into using the hair dryer. So it's minimizing 
drying time and less hair damage. How much so. do you sell the towel for? 39. 39. That seems fairly reasonable. Yeah. yeah. Right. But it's one of the highest priced ones, if not the most. Okay. Yeah. So we got a premium price point. It's got this beautiful packaging. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we're actually on QVC well yesterday. Oh, yeah. yeah. We've wow. Had, we've yeah, had we had an airing on QVC yesterday. Yeah. This is yeah. our third run on QVC. Mm-hmm. And we've yeah. had, we were Tim. on Today's Show and Good Morning America with this. And so we've had some great press with the towel. So it's really a nice lead in to For who sure, we are bigger, as a brand. Who yeah. has the bigger bump uh, between Good Morning America, QVC? Honestly, I mean, Today's Show kind of killed it. Like, yeah. it was like out of the blue like, okay. we're like, whoa we just sold everything we had yeah. <laughs> in one we, day we sold out of inventory in <laughs> we eight, eight hours yeah. that was a nice day that's wow. interesting data because I would have yeah. guessed QVC because people are actually tuning in we'll get in there like, we're stuff. getting the, yeah okay. QVC is a, you sort of it's, like a, it's, long a, tail? it's a different you build a longer wave I guess yeah you, got, you, you kind of have to lead in make sure the product's well received and sure. they keep yeah. asking us back which is, which is great yeah. do people um, get shocked that it's two men behind all this we have a team of women there that, that, <laughs> yeah. that make sure all of this yeah, goes And the person out. on QVC is yeah. this wonderful woman. Like, yeah, we're, you know, but he's got the beauty yeah. industry background. And right, right. Yeah, but, we but have no to, we have to give a shout out to our team. People don't know necessarily. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we yeah. definitely have to shout out to our team and that have all been, you know, been with For us. Sure. And I'd name you all and you know who you are. But we, we really appreciate all those, these girls that have helped us from marketing to business strategy to, you know, all yeah. of the Yeah, running our operations. And, How big is your team now? We got a 10. Okay. I mean, we have, yeah, it's, it's starting to grow. We've got a dream team, which has really helped us, you know, cause it, in the beginning it was, it was lonely for two of us. Sure. That's how it goes. Shout out to all you girls out there. Thank you. <laughs> and so you were saying, so when you guys, before you ended up launching this, you had this one product. So you're getting, right. I guess the brand awareness, you're getting the word out. And yeah, then yeah. is there a second product? There's another product here that you released maybe Yeah, after? we sort of did these, we call them sidekicks cause they're sort of the sidekick to the, the hero towel. So okay. this is a, Hair scrunchie, which you guys are familiar with scrunchies. So yeah. Using the same microfiber material, we designed this. It's just, um, you know, scrunchies are kind of something that's come back. But yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's innovative and it actually Where? will dry your hair. Okay, that's We have cool. some techniques. Some of our, Two our, one. our educators have. But these are also selling well. We're, you know, we're selling these together. And then, How much are the scrunchies? scrunchies are uh, $16 yeah. for two. Okay. Okay. And then we have. All this, this sounds very reasonable, very approachable. These have been fun. I mean, we, we've kind of. You know, as I said, the concept was to sort of build around the brand and, yeah. the, you know, they sort of work hand in hand with the whole Volo experience. And Yeah, uh, but I mean, the, yeah. the reality is without these products, we were running out of money. Sure. You know, it was getting pretty tight, but the towels got us through. They got us through a period where, you know, we didn't have a lot of money coming in. Uh, we were running out of investor money and we we're waiting for this Series A, which took forever to close. And thank goodness, you know, we sold, we had a huge uh, Christmas, I think it was 2018. And that allowed us to kind of float, keep, stay afloat until the, the Series A closed. So I think, you know, we go back to entrepreneurship, like getting to the point where you're, you're actually selling something is really, really as fast as you can, you know. And so it's really been a savior for us. Um, and it's kind of got legs of its own. To answer your other question, though, about how we're launching, so we have good, a lot of customers, and we've got right. 30,000, 40,000 people There's who have used there. our towel that love the product, that leave amazing reviews. Um, so obviously they're prime candidates. And then a lot of uh, social media, press, and just getting out there. You know, it, it will take a while to build this up because it's a new, it's a new technology, right? It's at the very front end of the innovation curve. So when, when it comes to raising capital for this type of product or company, right? You have, I, I look at this in two ways. You have this, the product here that probably does well on its own yeah. and that's very beauty centric, right. female focused. On this side, we have something that I would call like a technology, maybe a completely different investor. Yeah. As you guys are going through and raising your series A, what is your investor makeup look like? Are these traditional technology investors or these people who understand the beauty industry really well? Is it a hybrid? It's a great question. Yeah. I mean, it we, makes it hard, uh, right? Yeah. It makes it like, this is the yeah. challenging part. Of, yeah. Like who I mean, do you these speak are, to? These are two different monsters and totally, but yeah, this, I mean, this one to me what, is more what, approachable. Like as what, an investor, what, I get this. Well, and this, this is, I'm yeah. like, this Oh, is, this is what we came out of the gates with. Yeah. I mean, okay. the, the, the business Volo beauty was, well, we weren't even Volo at the, time yeah <laughs> we didn't have a name but yeah when we when we came out of the gates it was about this idea and this concept so that's really where our first you know angel investors or sort of friends and family that came in and believed in the us technology as a team. yeah okay um, and even the series a yeah it, it was really about the dryer i mean it's yeah. like oh that's cool you have the towel that's doing great sure but yeah this is i mean now we have seven patents on it like 
it's out on the market now. That's a huge milestone. I mean, it's um, easy to see the potential in this product for sure. Yeah. Um, how did you guys come up with the name Volo? <laughs> so we had a firm that basically said, well, for $100,000, we'll uh, help you come up with your brand name and all this stuff. Yeah. And, you know. Did you do that? No. <laughs> so, you know. Good choice. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I said, Ryan, we're going to do this. And we went into my garage. We had a whiteboard and a bottle of scotch. And we said, story. and we just Did sat there and, you know, I did this, I did a class <laughs> in, uh, in business school where we did these mind map things where you just start putting circles and you know, yeah. kind of go out. And we just did that for a couple of hours and came up with different words that were associated with it. And then, you know, yeah. we started with cordless, right. And freedom and all these things. And it came up mm. with the word flight. And then we translated flight into Italian. Ah, oh, volare. Yeah. yeah volo. And then it volo. also means desire, I guess, in uh, Latin. So. Yeah, that's how we came up with Volo and then went on. Okay, that's available. That's always the second step. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. we weren't yeah. sure if we were going to get it. Too. Yeah. There, was a, there was a moment we had some pushback on the name, but we got it. So yeah. it's great. Like, I think this is a good time. We can jump off into the, the patent process for this because, you know, brand new product, not to mention the patents themselves, but like the idea and, and the execution of it, I imagine, is where the gold is. Yeah. Were you guys like... I have to imagine super protective of this idea before you had the patents because yes. oh, you know, yeah. if this gets out, the bigger companies like the Dysons can can just swoop it up. Like, Was it like a big weight off your shoulders once you got those patents rolling in? Yeah, great question. Yeah, I mean, the truth is you can't patent a cordless hairdryer. Like that, this, that, that was sort of out there in the, in the, in the public domain and that sort of idea. So what, what we really focused on was our unique heating element, right? And the way it interacts with the battery and some of the different aspects of how air flows through a cordless hairdryer. We also came up with one of the first patents we got was related to very high tech. It has to do with how the dryer can communicate outside of the unit itself so it can actually send signals to a phone or a wi-fi like an app or something yeah okay mm -hmm. and and basically give feedback on you know how you're using the dryer you know take readings off of the, the temperature of your hair we haven't done that with this unit but that that is yeah. that was actually the first there. issued patent that we yeah. got when we were testing this is like the theragun or you can said it like you can basically massage your body and it'll tell you if you're if you're going too hard yeah. exactly there's yeah. a sensing mm -hmm. technology that links to an app to make right. sure you're getting the best massage sure. yeah so we're, we're okay. looking forward so to you guys have that, that. right and then you can share it with your hairstylist you can you know the, oh, wow. you, know, okay. you can it, get recommendations on products, products, products yeah. things like that but yeah and a lot a couple of the patents are more sort of protective as well i mean sort of looking into as you mentioned you can't patent a cordless hair dryer so we yeah we have some sort of defensive or preventative patents. Well, you can patent anybody. this. You can patent uh, probably the way it breaks apart. You can yeah, maybe, there's, some, there's a lot of design patents, but we actually the, have functional, the thing you put functional on the front, patents that, that the concentrator. actually, as, yeah, air, as airflow concentrator. comes in. Those would be a design patent. Yeah. yeah. But in terms of functioning patents, as airflow is coming in, it's cooling the battery pack. And as that heat's coming off the pack, which is not a lot, but it is there yeah for sure it's actually adding more heat so that's another sort of so so what's interesting about that patent is somebody who's trying to create a battery powered hair dryer cannot allow the heat from that battery into their airflow because we've got that patent yeah <laughs> interesting so, yeah, yeah yeah that's going to be a tough workaround yeah exactly yeah. but no there was definitely times when we were very very tight-lipped um about the patent even when we were working with factories in Asia. Most of the hair dryers in the world, 99% of them are made in Asia. So we went over there to select a, uh, a company. And one of the companies we were talking to made a dryer, a quarter dryer, but it used the bulb. And it was really the only one that we could find. So we were kind of interested in talking to them. But we never told them that we were doing a cordless hair dryer. We just told them we wanted to you know, see their factory and learn more about the infrared bulb as used in a hair dryer. And I remember we were in Beijing and... Uh, we actually just went there for fun to go check out the Great Wall of China. And the next day, we're flying to this factory. And I went online, and I found out that the daughter of the owner, who was a San Diego uh, student in, in a business program there, had released and marketed an infrared dryer. That was just like the one that we were we, we, basically we, asking them to make for us. Because, yeah, and she basically 
ripped it off, like ripped off our so idea. Learned- Thankfully, it was a quarter dryer. Wow. But we, like, we we're like, really literally the night before we're meeting with them, yeah. we're like, oh my goodness. That's she, what they do best, though. Yeah. Oh, like yeah. She <laughs> yeah. is totally like, it was a project, but now she's really trying to like market this product. And we were going to go visit them the next day. And we did. <laughs> we had a very <laughs> awkward meeting. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't yeah. surprise me. Yeah. yeah. The no. thing that Theragun did is they basically patented their attachments. And oh, so okay. this is their way, because yeah. if you think about the percussive muscle technology, like that's, right. it's just yeah. something repeating. And right. so the attachments is where they make their money mm-hmm. and it. people yeah. copy them. Right. And so that's yeah. where they have all their, all the patents. Yeah. yeah. We've, we've learned a lot from that, from that experience, but also, you know, from the people that I've known in the industry and Jonathan's known, you know, we've surrounded ourselves with some great people overseas, engineers, people that we've trust, you know, we've trusted since the beginning and we're still working with. Yeah. And one thing that's interesting about the patent stuff is like once you sort of have a stake in the ground, you can kind of expand it sure. easier. Yeah. And that's why like the first patent was the hardest. And then the second one, that was pretty hard. But then like three, four or five, those kind of just rolled because I think we had, you know, because we're just kind of getting a little bit more real estate. Like we're just kind of getting a little push, pushing that boundary out a little bit more. But really our stuff is all about the heating element because we think that's the way to go. I mean, if you're trying to do this with nichrome, you're just never going to have the heat. You're never going to be able to dry hair. Um, it's just, it draws too much power. It's almost designed to be inefficient. Yeah. Um, if you look at regular dryers, which we have like underneath where you do the heat maps, it's coming out in every dry. Like it's just, sure. it's just, sure. you because they want to be able to put on the side of the box 2,000 watts or whatever, you know. But they're oh. just, it's, it's not. <laughs> it's not watts really, in every direction. Yeah, so it's, <laughs> exactly. it's, just, it's all about power, you yeah. know. And it's like this marketing thing, and it's not really about like healthy hair or drying your hair even. Yeah. So it's just about, to add to that is, you know, we're, we're trying to educate people as right. well. That's you the know, magic. Yeah. It's, you know, you, you're damaging your hair, right? Like whoever's out there using your 1875 watt hair dryer that you paid whatever, 50 to 300 or $400, technically you're drying, you're damaging your hair every time. And so this whole system of, you know, obviously starting with the towel, moving on to this infrared technology is really the game changer for us. And that's really what we want our customers that are like, okay, sticker shock, it's 400 bucks or $450. Well, it's a better hair dryer and you know, it's also cordless. How do you guys think about educating your customer specifically in like a social media era? Is it, is it, do you guys do a lot of the education via your Instagram or is it maybe partnering with certain influencers? Cause the awareness has to be approachable and that's kind of the hard part, right? Yeah. And I think sometimes people will partner with like a major celebrity, but then nobody believes them. Cause obviously the major celebrity got a check. That'd be incredible. And so there's a lot of like micro influencers that people believe. Yeah. Almost like they made a, they made their following based on science, you know, telling right. people what to avoid. How do you guys think about that? I'd say it's a combination of all, you yeah. know, I mean, Instagram is certainly helpful. You can educate through that. Our website is very informative. We actually, we just revamped our website. I mean, user generated content, yeah. like getting yeah, real people key. to either just leave a review, take a photo, take a video. Um, and we saw it with the towel, it's the best towel, but it took a good year for to really kind of you know, it's like starting a fire. You know, it starts with little tiny things and then it builds and builds and builds. And then you have finally throwing logs on that thing. And we're fully expecting it's going to take a little while. I mean, it's, it's cutting edge technology. We're on the, you know, the early adopter curve. And we need to get those first people over. And once you get, you know, a slice of the people that love it, that believe this is a better technology, then we just go from there. Can you guys turn it on? Is this, is this, go for uh, it. Yeah, if you want to. I just want to, like, hear it. I think it's just cool. Yeah. Is it light? Can I grab it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it is light. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then there's See, a cool setting. Yeah, just hit it. There you yeah. go. That's yeah, awesome. and there's a there's another setting on there. It's got it's two, and one we've called smart mode, and basically what that does is it um, gives you a little more dry time, and what it does is it regulates the the heating elements. They kind of pulse on and off, so it'll give you a little longer runtime. Yeah, this is these units are available. We just launched. We just shipped out our first units, which we're very proud of. Good job. Yeah, yeah, that's and, huge. Uh, that's amazing. But yeah, they're for sale on our yeah. website now, uh, in a limited quantity. Um, we have more coming in on, on the way, and we're also doing a, a black, sort of a black and sort of dark gray. I was going to uh, ask because there, there's another yeah. version or color. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's just coming later. We, yeah. we had launched with it, but we had some. Um, we sort of just push forward with the white and those are being, do you think like the I mean, male market will ever be as interested in drawing oh yeah. hair? No, yeah. yeah. 
I've seen a lot of barbers. Cause that's actually. a, at least when I think about, I don't, again, I don't have much data, but other than my own, yeah. but in terms of like, I think about it like, okay. So when I think about beer, most women weren't, they didn't drink beer because marketing didn't tell them they could do it. Right. It was like, Oh, guys hanging around a football game. Yeah. And that's like the best market to go after. And so now we're seeing seltzers and it's the growing market. When I think about this similar in the sense of like, men are probably a pretty large opportunity to educate them on why they should dry their hair. Like I don't dry my, I shower and I'm out like, yeah. sure. So I think about like, if I were to buy this, I'd, I'd want it to be a robe. <laughs> there you go. Right. It's coming. Well, yeah. we, have a, yeah, we, we do have a robe, we have a robe being manufactured. Yeah. Something right that now. dries me without no yeah. work, with no work. No, barbers are very interested yeah, in this, right? Cause with a, a male haircut, they typically finish up with like a quick little thing, but they, it's kind of cool. It's fast. It's cordless. So we're seeing a lot of interest and we've there. We've had some pretty, um, celebrity type hairdressers reach out to us in yeah. the past and they want to check it out. Yeah. Now that we have it, they want to see the, you know, the finished unit, but we've had prototypes that we've, you know, shown around to some pretty high flute and male hairdressers out there that were like, I want it. I want it now. So we're for them. Yeah. I would have to imagine it's also a factor of wanting to have the latest and greatest to yeah. impress their high profile clientele. Mm -hmm. You know, right. if you come out with a cordless hairdryer, that's, that sets you apart yeah. from your, competition right sure. who's also a hairdresser and it's definitely eye-catching for sure yeah. and in fact so like going back to what you had said earlier about educating the consumer on your website on your website you have a progression of like the very first hair dryer from the 1920s right all the way up until this right now and i believe the caption of the very first hair dryer says something along the lines of you know not much has changed and to be fair it looks pretty much exactly the same as any hair dryer you would ever see <laughs> right. today. Yeah. yeah. I mean, maybe with a wooden handle, but right. I mean, it, it's one of those things that strikes you. It's like, why has it taken this long to yeah. like really progress and, and really innovate in the market? I mean, like it's, it's shocking to me because for what you said earlier, like a $13 billion industry, something like that, 18, like 18, not, yeah. 18 billion yeah. dollar industry, even yeah. better. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we didn't yeah. know what we were getting ourselves into. Yeah. <laughs> we really yeah, didn't know. I think that was, that was part of, you know, if you, that's why, you know, it's like the innovator's dilemma. If you guys have read that book by Clayton M. Christensen, you know, big companies, it's, this was way too risky. Everybody said you can never be done. So we just, we didn't know what we didn't know, but we, you know, we figured it out. The other, the other thing that's kind of interesting is it doesn't make you hot, right? So, you know, women with these old traditional hair dryers, they actually start to sweat yeah, especially in the summertime. They're, you know, they yeah. can't do their makeup because they're sitting there blasting themselves with this heating unit. Yeah. And one thing people keep saying is like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sweating. Like I'm, it's actually kind of a cool way to dry your hair. And back to your question or your, your comments too, it hasn't changed the technology inside. But what I've seen in selling, you know, I've been retailing and wholesaling hair dryers forever is it's really just, you know, each year I go to the trade shows and they show me the new, you know, 1875 or the 2000 watt. It's basically just what some new slogan on the, on the box, but it's the same damn product. And they don't need to innovate it. They just want to say, this is the super turbo. They add ionic, you know, these things are, they do make changes, but they're not, it's, it's just not been innovated. And the, the th you know, when you plug it into the wall, you can draw 1875 watts all day. So they're just going to stick with that and just market it. And as yeah. you said, no interest in innovating. And, you know, Dyson did innovate it and we give them, you know, kudos for what they did. It's a beautiful design. You know, they, they have great reviews. It's sold all over the world, but it is still corded and it's still a nichrome wire technology. So when you think about the salon game, do you think about like a bigger one, like something that could probably withstand the use of just the repeat use of someone in a salon? We have a uh, design for a multi-bay charging unit. Okay. All right, so you can hot swap the batteries. Yeah, and different lighter batteries, but you know, that, so you can just swap in. We also have cordless curling iron, cordless flat iron, so. All on the horizon? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One thing at a time. Yeah, yeah one there. thing at a like time. We've, we've started to, you can't really lose focus. You know, one of my, yeah. one of our, Great yeah. investors and mentor of mine told me one time. It's all about planting we were, flags. We were, we were to, talking to what about you said. this and that, and he just said focus. And yeah. I always, we always go back to that. The so. plant your flag theory, where it's yeah. like, plant your flag here, own that market, yeah. plant yeah. your flag there. We believe that at some point every hairdryer will be cordless, and we're just the first, right? I think that so. makes sense. I mean, that that's very, like, I call that, like, linear thinking. Like, that makes perfect sense. Like why, why would it be anything else that makes it's in line and you guys are a first mover. And so that makes it attractive yeah. from like an investment standpoint. Yeah. 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 
the first mover, yeah. Right, you know, and we're building a brand. You know, we've got some technical barriers. We're just trying to do all the things. Where can people buy it? Tell them where they can purchase. On our website, volobeauty.com. Okay. okay. Yep. 450. 450. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ryan, since your family is in this business, was there ever a moment where they were like, oh, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was kind of, um, I've, I've got to give some, some credit to my dad. I mean, he and I just, he's an innovator and I have to give him full credit. I mean, he's, he's taught, <laughs> me, he's, he's taught me a lot about this industry. My mom as well. I mean, we worked as a family business and, and, uh, my dad is, is an innovator, man. The guys, you know, when he started back, when he started working with my grandfather, he really sort of innovated the beauty supply space and, you know, had salons in the back and, you know, the guy was just an incredible salesman and he taught me a lot, but he, he just had a lot of ideas, a lot of great ideas. And this sort of was a, I owe him a lot of credit for, for this concept too. One of the questions we have to ask is this like time in your entrepreneurial journey where you had to like do more. And so this would be the moment of like, maybe you, you were on the cusp of failing or didn't have enough cash to sustain you for more time. How did you lean in and and make it through yeah, that, man, overcome it, that. It, it was real. So a lot of this, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I sold my house Yeah. Wow. and I mean, part of it, I was, I was going through a divorce. Um, but we'll leave that out. You yeah, sold your house. <laughs> I mean, but, but I, you know, we weren't taking pay. Right. Yeah. And we had, we put all our chips on the table and then, you know, Ryan also, I, I, I basically, my family business that, you know, I'd help grow from seven stores to 21, stores and distribution and I basically had to step down and resign because I needed to focus on the business and there was sort of a segue of where I was trying to work both and it was just too much and I needed to dedicate myself to the business and so I sort of resigned from that salary and stepped into this full time where I had no salary so I took a big risk and that was that was a lot on my family and he and I but we we powered through I mean it's a great question I mean he and I we sort of feed off each other. I mean, he's, he's taught me about books and things that he's read and given me inspiration. And I don't know what the hell I did to help him <laughs> on, but I was there. No, it's just, we, we, we sort of fight together and we have good days yeah. and bad, but you know, we've been at it six years and you know, for considering what we've accomplished here, it's, it's been just about, you know, you, Jonathan sent me this thing a long time ago. It's about a guy that's got those posts and he's climbing up that wall. You know, that's really what is in the back of our mind. But for people day, like on the fringe of maybe deciding to leave their job and pursue their habit or their passion or their company, you would say that's it's required, right? I think it's required. I mean, if yeah. you really want to have success, I mean, that's that's what did it for me. I could have. I could have failed the company if I hadn't done it another way. And Jonathan had another startup company that he was sort of trying to get off the ground at the same time. And so we both sort of just said, F it, let's go and, and let's dedicate ourselves to this. And I have to say it was a lot of fun. It was very rewarding. Even the tough parts, you know, and you know, my wife would say, you're a different person. You just seem like you're happier at what you do, even though mm. you don't make any money um, <laughs> yeah. at the time, you know, but yeah. we're, you know, we've sort of endured. And I say when you're, you know, your back's up against the wall, it sounds cliche, but you're, it's you're never done yeah. till you're done. Yeah. No, yeah, we you need that. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, we've never even thought about giving up. No. I mean, the persistence that we've had through so many crazy situations where people are like, you know, we didn't think we were going to have money. We didn't think we could do it technically. We couldn't get the patent. We couldn't get the trademark. People are, you know, falling away and we just keep going. We just never, we never said we're not going to keep going. Not even once. Like yeah. we just, we it's the whole game. keep moving persistence and just like hanging in there. And, um, yeah, it's, and we're still not there. I mean, we still got another five years of building for this yeah. to, to really get to, you know, so we're, That's a good we way just to lost the last, we, yeah, I mean, we're about halfway approach. through. You know, and then you read, you know, I don't know if you ever, Sam Altman, he does this, uh, he did a series, a series at Stanford on um, startups and, you know, they, they basically the Y Combinator. Like, well, yeah. And we he did a whole y amazing series, yeah. you know, great, really good stuff. And, yeah. you know, he's got all these guys come in and talk, but they're like, it's gonna be five or 10 years. Like set yourself up for that, yeah. you know, and really, you know, that's how long it takes to build a business. A meaningful one for sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, you guys have crossed a major milestone in getting this thing out to market. Yeah. So yeah. serious congratulations. Yeah, thank, thank you for that. Yeah. Thank you. Well, listen, tell everyone where they can find you guys and support and purchase the product. Yeah. I mean, follow us on Instagram, Volo Beauty, uh, www.volobeauty.com. You can reach out to us, you know, we're pretty approachable. So find yeah. us. And 
We're very yeah. approachable. Well, thank it. you guys so yeah. much for coming on, on the, the show. Yeah, awesome. yeah, yeah really great. appreciate it.